In this video, I'm going to talk about the topic of kinematics, which is very useful in physics and also calculus. Now, to start doing examples on kinematics in calculus or in physics, you should know some basic terms. So let us un uh, read some conventions which are used in kinematics in physics and calculus. So the first convention is all motion is considered to start from, from an arbitrary point called the origin. So we say this is the origin. Okay. So we say motion usually takes place in the horizontal line. That means when you're talking about motion, it's generally on the horizontal line. Okay. And it either goes away from the origin to the right or to the left. However, if the motion is vertical, it can also go vertical. The origin is taken as the ground level. So if it goes up or down, the ground level is called the origin. Whereas if it's horizontal, the origin is O. Yeah. Now I've drawn the two axes so instead of X and Y. In kinematics, you can have X would be your independent uh, axis, okay, which is T, time, and D for distance. Of course, it should not be D in calculus. We use S. Okay, I forgot. S is for distance, and V is for velocity. Okay, so S is for distance, and this is velocity. Initial, the term initially means, this is very, uh, it comes quite often, the term initially means the time is zero. So this is a time is equal to zero, means initially. This is usually when the motion starts. Okay. These are all logical statements. Distances above or to the right of the origin is taken as positive. Okay, suppose I'm talking about distance. If it's to the right, or above is taken as positive. So conversely, if it's to the left or down, it would be negative. Distances below or to the left of the origin is taken as negative. An object is at if an object is at origin when the distance s is equal to zero. So distance in calculus is taken as s. Okay. Very clear. So if distance if S is 0, it's an origin. If the S is positive, it's moving away from the, it's moving to the right or above. And if S is negative, it is to the left or below the origin. Okay, now about velocity. Positive velocity indicates an object is moving to the right or upwards or in generally away from the origin. That means if you have a velocity which is positive, means it's going to the right or up or in other words, away from the origin. It's not coming towards the origin, it's away. Negative velocity indicates that an object is moving to the left, or downward, or in general, back towards the origin. If a uh, object is coming towards the origin, it is it has a negative velocity. And if it is moving to the left of the origin, Though it is going away from the origin, it is moving to the left of the origin. That's considered to be negative. And if it's going down, it's again negative. And if velocity is zero, means the, the object is stationary or at rest. Now, these are the terms that are used. Now, let us look at acceleration. The same approach, positive acceleration. I hope you know acceleration. Okay, velocity is change in distance. Okay, so let me write velocity. In physics, you have learned is d d oh, sorry delta d over delta t. Okay, so that's what you delta d over delta t. That is change in distance over change in time. But in calculus, we are talking about instantaneous velocity. Okay, so here in calculus. So let me specify, and that's why we write S, not D. Cal I hope so. That's what I presume. In calculus, we're talking about instantaneous velocity. Instant. I'll explain that later. Instantaneous 
velocity. Instantaneous velocity is the velocity at a particular instant when time is almost zero, when the difference of time is almost zero. So that's written as ds, uh, or we can write velocity, velocity, instantaneous velocity is ds by dt. So here, this is called instantaneous velocity because this dt means it is almost zero. The difference or delta t is almost approaching zero. That means you imagine a car uh, moving from one point to the other with a time difference of almost zero. So what's the speed or what's the velocity at that particular instant? Okay, And that is called ds by dt. And that's why we don't use dd by dt. So velocity is ds by dt. And acceleration is, you have learned acceleration is uh, delta V over delta T. Okay, in physics you have learned delta V, that is change in velocity over change in time. But in, in calculus A, you will write as dV by dT. Okay, that is instantaneous, here again it's instantaneous acceleration. So that is, what's the change in velocity and the change in time is almost zero. Okay, or in other words, when t or when delta t approaches zero, this is you can I'll not go into this when you learn year 13 calculus, you'll understand this. So what is the change in velocity? Sorry, what's the change in velocity when the change in time is almost zero? And this delta t when approaches zero is taken as dt. Okay, so what is positive acceleration indicates an object is speeding up. Okay, and a negative ex negative acceleration in some books in physics they also say deceleration, but negative acceleration indicates an object is slowing down. And if the acceleration is zero, if a is equal to zero, the object is traveling at a constant speed. There is no change in velocity. Now, this is what, again, you need to understand. S is for distance, V for velocity, A for acceleration. They all are related to time. So, you can say velocity is change in distance over change over time. And acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. So, distance, velocity, and acceleration are all functions of time. Okay, they all can be expressed as a time variable. So, so this is what I said. S, I, I just discussed. What is S? Okay, so where are we? Yeah. Mm, so, yeah, sorry. V, we want to find, if you differentiate S, ds by dt, okay, that means if you differentiate S with respect to time, I'll write like this. WRT means with respect to time. If S is differentiated with respect to time, you get velocity. And if you differentiate velocity with respect to time, you get acceleration. Okay, you'll learn integration later on. Okay, or integration is the opposite of differentiation. So, going backwards, if you integrate with respect to time, I'll, I'll come to that later, with respect to time, the acceleration, you get velocity, and when you integrate velocity with respect to time, you get, okay, I should have written here, uh, I will change this to S, sorry, not D, I get confused here, so this is S, in calculus it is S, not D. So I'll go over one question, very simple question. Okay, now this question I've got from one of the New Zealand textbooks called the Theta textbook. Okay, so what does the question say? The distance S in meters traveled by a particle is given by this formula. S is 80 T minus 12 T squared. So the first question is find an expression for velocity and hence the initial velocity. Okay. So what they're asking us is, 
you want to find the uh, expression of velocity. So velocity you know is change in distance over change in time that is ds by dt. So if s we already know s is att minus 12t squared which implies if I differentiate this with respect to t and I differentiate att the derivative is at. And when you differentiate 12 t squared, you remember the rule, drop the power down and decrease by 1. So that is 24 t. So this is the differentiation. So this is this part answered and hence the initial velocity. Okay, so the question is, what is the velocity when t is equal to 0? Initial velocity means they're asking you, when t is equal to 0, what is your v? Okay, so we know v as a function of t. So v, you can write v as a function of t like this, is a t minus 24 t. So v, or velocity as a function of t is this. Now you are, they are asking you what is v0. v0 is a t minus 24 times 0, which is a t 80 meters per second, 80 meters per second, because this is in second, distance is in, uh, in meters, velocity is distance uh, meters per second, so that's your first answer answered, first question answered, okay, now the next question is, when is the particle at rest, so the particle is at rest when there is no Velocity. Okay, so let me write particle is at rest when v is equal to zero. When there is no velocity, it, that particle is said to be at rest. So let me say v, we know, is a t minus 24 t. I'm going to set v is equal to zero, so zero is equal to 80 minus 24t. So the next step, I hope you understand 24t is equal to 80. So which implies you divide this side by 24 and you can also divide this side by 24. So t is equal to 80 divided by 24. And if you use a calculator, that is 3.3 3, uh, recurring. Okay, so 3.3 .3 recurring. Uh, so the question is when, so that is after 3.3 .3 seconds, particle is at rest when v is equal to 0. So they're asking you at what time, when means at what time. So you can say after 3.3 .3 seconds, the, velo the object is, uh, at rest, that means it has zero velocity. And final question, let me scroll that up, find the acceleration. So now what is acceleration? A is dv by dt. So what do we know about v? v is at minus 24t. So if you differentiate, so dv by dt, this implies a is equal to dv by dt. So if you differentiate this, the differentiation of constant is 0 minus 24. And the unit of acceleration you should be knowing is meters per second squared. So that is 24, negative 24 meters per second squared. Now I want you to think what does this negative number means? Negative acceleration means the object is, let me go back, what does negative acceleration mean? Negative acceleration indicates the object is slowing down. So uh, this number or this answer tells me that the object is slowing down. See you in the next video.